Okay, this is a very quick demonstration of proof of concept of a clustering in MarkEdit 7. Um, we won't show the editing tools partly because I'm still trying to figure out um, what the interface for the actual cluster data looks like. You're going to notice um, in reading uh, in the creation of the clusters and uh, generating uh, the index that the, uh, there's a little bit of lag here um, that's partly going to be the case until I go through and, and add uh, uh, the code to allow the UI to um, uh, not lock up. All right, so right now, um, this will be a standalone tool too, but within the Mark Editor, I'm envisioning this where you have tools, clustering tools. Um, you have to take the data out of Mark. Uh, inside of Mark, we're not going to be able to do um, the work that we need to do. Uh, so underneath, there's a data model that's been created that Mark Edit uses. Um, so here we're going to create um, uh, index. You can either index all your data or custom fields. I'm going to index uh, the 1, 6, and 7xx. So we'll run the index. Um, this file has 115,000-ish records. Um, that means that when we finish, there'll be um, an index created for uh, roughly 136,250 uh, 136, um, items that need to be pulled together. So I'm going to cluster names, one and seven. Um, there are uh, three clustering algorithms. We'll use the Levinson distance algorithm. Um, there are some assumptions that I make, uh, and I'm going to have to push those into this screen. Uh, the assumption, the first assumption that I'm making right now is that you don't want to actually um, do clustering against all of the data in the field, um, in the 1 and 700 fields. There's some data that's more important than others, and so in this case, uh, because you want to be able to see um, in a, a cluster if data is missing dates or things like that, I'm primarily clustering on the subfield A. Um, uh, and so that's what I'm going to push down is so you can actually decide, do you want to use the entire field? Uh, do you want to cluster on um, specific subfields or, or a single subfield? So I'm uh, right now that's not in the interface. So I'm going to tell you right now the assumption that I've made in this process is it's clustering on the subfield A. So we'll generate the cluster. This will take it a second because it's having to run through, um, pulls to get the data from the, um, the uh, internal data model that's now been created. And now it's going through, um, like I said, 136,000-ish um, entries, uh, trying to determine um, which ones um, should be clustered together. Uh, in the future, um, as I finish wrapping up this process, I'll include some kind of um, uh, interaction in the UI so that you can tell um, what's going on. Because uh, in the background right now, there's lots of stuff that's going on. It takes it a minute to pull the, uh, the data together, um, particularly for a larger set like this. Uh, I expect it'll probably, I'll probably be able to make it uh, a little bit faster. There's some assumptions that I'm making uh, based on the data that um, I'm working with. Uh, Mark data, uh, there's some assumptions that we can make in terms of um, how the data gets processed. Uh, and then there's um, one of the other things that I'm, I'm noticing is that rendering the, the cluster data takes a little bit of time because um, sometimes there's a lot of data to be, to be put in place. All right, so there we go. Data's been pulled apart and clustered. Uh, if we go through and we look at uh, the data, we can see that um, the marks are together as um, either, um, right now they're color-coded, they're either put together as light colors, right now either green or white. Um, this is a large data set, so uh, things are printed out alphabetically. Here you'll see there's the subfield A, Here's the Bs that relate to it, but again, the subfield A, so they're all clustered together as a single set. Uh, we can probably skim through here. Here's a large set of data that's been clustered together. We have the parent, and then we have all of the materials that have um, tags like it. Uh, again, right here, we have another one um, where we have a parent and then all the tags like it. So the idea here is that um, uh, in clustering tools that you would be able to select either an select an entire cluster or select materials in the cluster um, and change either the entire field um, or change subfields, parts within the field. So you could pass those across in, in batch um, and make that work. So um, I'm not quite sure yet um, how, um, what the 
interface should look like. Right now I'm just printing stuff out so that I can see that the data works. Um, I've kicked around the idea of doing more of a tree view style so that you can open and close things, uh, try and decide whether for printing right now you'll see that the data is printed out um, just for concept here it's being printed out in alphabetical order which is you know okay if I want to if I have stuff then I have to sort through the list um, does it make more sense to push the clusters up so it's sorted by cluster size um, that way you you see the things that um, have potential uh, problems up front that seems to be maybe that would be the better interface. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. Um, and hopefully we'll get some feedback from folks when they start working with this in terms of giving uh, an idea of, um, of what might uh, actually need to um, uh, be done here uh, in terms of making it easy to be able to um, uh, see the kind of problems that are there. Um, again, this used the subfield A uh, as the cluster point. Um, but uh, you could have, um, and, and I will set it up so that you can define multiple subfields, so you can include multiple subfields. So internally there's a data model um, that uh, stores the data outside of MARC. Um, the initial um, uh, gener generation of the index does the, the first part, and then in the second part the tool pulls together um, uh, materials that uh, meet a specific criteria, primarily things that are in, in a specific field range. Um, and then we'll um, go through whatever the, the um, matching algorithm is that's been selected to try and determine um, uh, how the data should be clustered. Uh, like I said, this is on a data set of 115,000 records. I anticipate that when I'm finished, performance will probably work well um, up to about, a, uh, about half a million records. Um, although I would imagine that if you needed to do many more than that, I'd, I'd probably stick with OpenRefine um, since there are ways to move data into and out of. And, and the data model that OpenRefine uses makes uh, um, this kind of stuff happen a lot faster. Um, but for folks who um, don't know how to use OpenRefine, who are uncomfortable moving data into and out of the, the, the resource, um, or who have other um, reasons why they can't make use of the tool, this should provide some kind of a, a lightweight clustering mechanism when it's finished. Um, so anyways, this is how it's working right now. Um, I still have uh, the two other um, sorting algorithms to implement. Uh, uh, I have them working, but I need to do some optimization on them before I'm ready to, to start using them. Um, and then I just need to start thinking about what this screen here looks like so that it's really easy for folks to be able to see um, uh, how large clusters and what data might need to be worked. So anyways, that's how it's working right now in Markout 7, and we'll see where it goes from here.